All right, question two says product advertisers study the effects of television ads on children's choices of two new snacks. The advertisers used two 30-second television ads in an experiment. One ad was for a new sugary snack called uh, Coco Zooties, and the other ad was for a new healthy snack called Apple Zooties. For the experiment, 75 children were randomly assigned to one of three groups, A, B, or C. Each child individually watched a 30-minute television program that was interrupted for five minutes of advertising. The advertising was the same for each group with the following exceptions. Group A saw the Coco Zooties, but not the Apple Zooties ad. Group B was the opposite of Group A, and Group C didn't see either ad for those snacks. After the program, the children were offered a choice between the two snacks. The table below summarizes their choices. All right, so this is a, a table with categorical variables, so this, this seems like a chi-square test. Um, it says, do the data provide convincing statistical evidence there is an association, all right, definitely chi-square test, between the type of ad and the children's choice of snack among all children similar to those who participated in the experiment. All right. So this is asking us to do a test. We can do this with a, a state plan do approach. So state. We wish to test the following hypotheses. Our null hypothesis is going to be there is no association. There is no association between ad type and children's choice. Our alternative hypothesis is there is an association. And no alpha value was stated, so we'll use the standard um, 0.05. We will test at alpha equal to 0 0.05. All right, there's our state step, our plan. So we need to check conditions and also state our inference method in our plan. Um, if conditions are met, we will conduct a chi-square test for association. All right, the first condition uh, with chi-square test of association is, is random. So since this was a, a randomized experiment and the students were, or the kids were randomly assigned, that condition is going to be met. So random. Randomized experiment. Independent. Uh, the next condition is actually large sample size. To check this condition, we need to see if um, all of our expected cell counts are at least five. So on the calculator, if we go to uh, matrix, and we make the first matrix a, a 3 by 2. Here's what we observed. So this is our observed matrix. Let's just check that. 21, 4, 13, 12, 22, and 3. Okay. Um, so there's our observed matrix. And notice these values are less than 5, but that's not what we're looking at. We're looking at if our expected counts would be less than 5. So now if we go to stat and we run a chi-square test, our observed matrix is A, it will store our expected matrix in B. All right, so here's actually our chi-square te uh, test statistic. Here's our p-value and our degrees freedom. We'll get back to those in a minute. Um, let's go to our 
our expected matrix. So here's, here's uh, what we'd expect. So let's actually copy that down. Expected counts. So we have uh, group A, B, and C, and then we have those who chose the chocolate and those who chose the apples. Kind of a boring expected counts, but um, what we want to know here is all expected counts are at least five. So that's random, large sample size. Our last condition is independent. In this case, this has nothing to do with the 10% rule. Um, this is a, a randomized experiment, so we're not, we're not sampling. I think what's most important in our context here to check the independent condition is that the kids, first off, were randomly assigned to each of the three groups, and they individually watched the 30-minute program. So we have no reason to expect they would be affecting each other. So each child's um, experience was independent. of the others. All right, so I think our conditions are met. Next is our do step, which we've already done. Um, if I go back to here, let's rerun the test to get our data. I'm actually going to click draw. Oh, that didn't work. Calculate. All right, our chi-square test statistic is 10 point, about 10.291 in our p-value. So now our degrees freedom is equal to two. I think this is the I know a chi-squared uh, distribution is always skewed right, that's a minimal degrees freedom, so it's going to be skewed very right. So let's see if we can. Something like that. All right. And we have a really small p-value, so maybe our, our test statistics about here, and this is our, our p-value. As far as work on the do step, we did it mostly on the calculator. Um, I'm not sure how much is going to be required there. You could calculate this all out manually, but I'm going to leave it as that for now. Um, our, what this p-value is telling us is if there was no association between ad type and children's preference, the probability of observing as extreme of results as we did um, extreme being deviations from what we'd expect is 0 0.0058. So that's a low p-value. So this seems to be providing evidence to reject this null hypothesis in favor of the alternative. So that's what we're going to do in our conclude step. Conclude with a p-value of about 0 0.0058, which is less than alpha of 0 0.05, we reject the null hypothesis. There is sufficient evidence that 
there is an association between ad type and children's snack choice. Now normally what I would like to do in the conclude step is a little bit of follow-up analysis, but um, this problem seems to be prompting for that. So I think we could save the follow-up analysis for part B. So part B says, write a few sentences describing the effect uh, of each ad on children's choice of snack. So there's a couple of ways to do this. If you, if you compare your observed to your expected, you can figure out the chi-squared contributing factors for each of these values. Uh, that, that would be a little time consuming. I guess the easiest way to approach this would be we're trying to find the effect of each ad. So this is this uh, that really is only asking us to look at A and B. But if we look at group C, we can see something interesting. When neither ad was shown, uh, you had 22 out of the 25 preferring the chocolate one. When the chocolate ad was shown, you had 21 out of the 25. These are pretty close. Um, they have very similar proportions. So what that tells me is that this, this chocolate ad didn't seem to have much effect on influencing the children's choice. Now the opposite is true with the Apple Zooties ad. Uh, with the Apple Zooties ad, we see a quite a different distribution than when neither ad was shown. A lot of the kids who probably would have chosen the chocolate just by default seem to switch over to choosing the apples. So how can we describe all of that? Um, when, when just the Choco Zooties ad was shown, the distribution of snack choice was very similar to when no ad was shown, no uh, snack ad was shown. This suggests the Coco Zooties ad had little effect on children's snack choice. Um, in contrast, in contrast, the Apple Zooties ad group had quite a different distribution than when no ad was shown. Was quite different in distribution. So this suggests the Apple Zooties ad was effective or had an effect, we'll say it was effective in influencing some children to choose, influencing children to choose the apples. Um, we should probably put at least one contributing factor here. So if we look at this 12, what we observed what we expected was a 6.3. So the contributing factor, the contributing chi-square factor for, for uh, group B Apple choosers is 
is, all right, observed minus expected squared all over expected. And I'm not sure this is entirely necessary um, for full credit here, but might as well look at it. So given our total chi-squared test statistic was about 10, and this contributing factor was 5, this had a, a pretty significant contribution to our conclusion. So we'll say this is a large part of our decision to reason reject the null hypothesis uh, in card A. All right. 